of, of, our, of our lives. So as you see, hacking the DNA of humanity with AI and blockchain, and this is creating the next tsunami. So about me, you can see, so I'll go forward. So we are in the middle of a tsunami. Why a tsunami? Because we have a lot of waves, and these waves are very powerful. Waves of technology, waves of regulation, waves of technology related with regulation and social impact, waves of data, and so forth. And a very important thing in these waves is that for the first time in history of human being as we exist, we created something digital that is merging with our organic. So, and these organic and digital are getting together. Everyone here has a digital profile and an organic profile. Our digital profile at the moment is becoming part of our organic. Why? We sleep with our phones, we get close to our phones for everything we do, we have around 20, 30 sensors from each of our devices, and these sensors are monitoring everything we do, are passing data to big corporations worldwide and governments, and a lot of this data is in the hands of a few organizations and entities worldwide. But this data right now is starting to be managed by machine learning technology that is still in a very exceptional way, but is already very powerful and is creating a lot of new areas. So we have the most sensitive technologies in our world. So blockchain, IoT, Internet of Things, FinTech, Fourth Industrial Revolution as we call it. And all of these technologies are the DNA of our time in terms of data, in terms of what we do, in terms of everything we do, in terms of technology, business, and so forth. So I want to talk about how blockchain is so powerful in the sense of touching the very sense of identity. And of course, you can go in a lot of discussions, Bobby and Eric had a fantastic talk about the nuances of the blockchain technology and how we can use crypto technology to do a lot of things. But in the end of the day, blockchain technology is creating identity for money and ideal decentralized. But as humans, we're not decentralized. We are very centralized. So we have a paradox between ethics, reality, and of course our organic DNA. So we have a lot of considerations here. And this, if you look at all our society, we have all of this happening as we speak. It's not in five years. We have consumer electronics, media, computing, all operating in an area that has all these devices of wireless infrastructure, sensors, um, plenty of other things. So blockchain technology and IE are, are touching personal, private, public, psychological, professional, healthcare, wellness, governmental and military data and as well the operations around these things. So, when you look at tech mainstream, and this is where we are at the moment, we have mostly privacy ownership, identity, and then we have machine learning super intelligence that we're starting to have, especially with artificial intelligence. But I always look at artificial intelligence and blockchain together. I know that you can go very puristic about blockchain, and I'm not going to do that in these 10 minutes, but what is important right now is that blockchain is creating this identity for money and for identity for ourselves. And you can use it for a lot of other things. The way you decentralize, the way you de use the distributed ledgers, a lot of things can be done. Then, but very important thing, we are in the early stage. The internet took, took 15 years to become mainstream and is still not mainstream in most of the world. The biggest technology on the planet is still paper. So, very important thing, I mentioned this in the morning, we have at the moment four kinds of operations going on. Human to human, human to machine, machine to human, and machine to machine. This is happening as we speak. And this is where the hacking of our DNA is starting to happen, and a lot of things are actually going to the next level. So when we start getting into looking at DNA as a storage, because in the end of the day, if you look at us as human beings, our DNA is our artificial intelligence. So when we start touching this in terms of healthcare, which we are right now, and we start taking this mainstream, we're going to have very complicated considerations to take. And on here I'm positive and very alarmed as well, 
but I'm actually being very pragmatic. And there's people like us that are leading the world on all of these things. So, as you can see at the moment, if you get in our DNA, as a repository of data, you can actually get most of the data of mankind on the DNA. So, and as you see here, this is actually scientific studies published by the Nature magazine, where you can actually see it. This is already happening. There are scientists already converting organic DNA with digital DNA. As you can imagine, this opens a lot of considerations, much bigger actually than decentralized and centralized. But this is happening as we speak. But ironically, when you talk about artificial intelligence, we have all of this, okay? All of this is happening as we speak. We are part of swarm intelligence, us. Our DNA is based on swarm intelligence. I'm not going too technical here. But as we speak, we are still in the early stages, but this is already happening in a very high profile scale. And as, we, as you see as well, this is touching all the areas of society. From finance, to education, to healthcare, marketing, and e-commerce, marketplaces, and everything else. And the foundational technologies of blockchain and artificial intelligence are the biggest chunk of the economical growth that we have in the next 10, 20 years. If you see, there's a study saying that blockchain is going to be around $3 trillion uh, around 2030. And we have at the moment the world economy worth $80 trillion. And as well, artificial intelligence will be around $13 trillion. Considering the $80 trillion of the world economy, this is a huge chunk of the entire world economy that is going to be replaced by machine learning and artificial intelligence and blockchain solutions, software, and other things. So, but we have right now all of these considerations that are mostly ethical. Automation, that according to some studies will take around 800 million jobs in the next 10 years. AI and fake news. Lack of transparency, which is a big thing uh, to sell us. And all the risks of ethical, if we have a scientist that goes ballistic and creates some superhumans, which we have right now, for instance, in China. In the last couple of months, there was a scientist that created an experiment uh, and actually convert humans in machines and integrate things in DNA. So this is actually happening now. So we need to look at these things and create the value to make sure that as we start hacking our DNA, and this is right now happening, we look at the governance, the ethics, the planning, the code monitoring, and we create these things that we partly can solve with blockchain technology. The consensus, the data sharing in an ethical way and in a centralized way, and of course creating algorithms that can help us improving uh, our activity as humans. And a couple of things to finish. So, we have online and offline, private and public, social, national, international. We need to make sure that we align all of these in the most ethical way, because the data is going to continue growing, and our privacy is going to continue disappearing. And at the same time, when you look at blockchain, there's a lot of considerations. There was a lot of talks, a fantastic talk between Eric and, and Bobby, but we have society and business considerations. We have financial and trading, legal, regulatory, technology, and a lot of policies. And of course, when you talk about blockchain, there's the ideology, which is what Bobby was pushing, the decentralized versus distributed, the private blockchains versus, versus non-private, and crypto economics, supply chain, a lot of different things that blockchain is touching as we speak. And as well, the data that is the oil of the 21st century is much more powerful than that. That is the physical and digital merging. So, and of course the DNA that is our identity. And I'm finishing my time, so I think the most important thing to finish is we have to be conscious about this. These two technologies are the center of our humanity civilization. We are all working on it. We have a responsibility to create solutions that solve problems, and at the same time, we need to define the right rules between governments, society, universities, to get this right. And as well, we need to ride these waves, these waves because they're going to become bigger as we speak. And uh, the important thing is that this massive tsunami, we have only two things, we become submerged by them, or we surf it. And that's my focus and approach towards all of you. I'm, I have this presentation in SlideShare. You can check in dinish.parla and my Twitter and so forth. Thank you so much.